So uh, please welcome Tony Cronley. Thank you, Jim. Uh, it's great to be back uh, at Dartmouth. I hadn't expected to be back quite so quickly after my uh, visit to the hospital last uh, <laughs> last Saturday. Uh, but I've, I've enjoyed my visits to the campus uh, before, with that one exception. Um, and I'm honored to have a hand in, uh, uh, and a role to play in the inauguration of, um, of your new program. Does the, the, the question of the meaning of life have a place in the curriculum of Dartmouth College? Well, to put it that way is likely to cause a few lips uh, to curl in uh, uh, skeptical uh, amusement at the thought, in part because the phrase, the meaning of life, is so ridiculously portentous and high-minded and windy uh, and, uh, and empty, perhaps. Um, Comedians, Woody Allen first um, among them, have long made a living uh, puncturing the balloons of pretentious intellectuals who go around babbling about the meaning of life. Um, I remember Woody Allen once remarking that uh, he'd been an undergraduate in philosophy, a uh, major in philosophy as an undergraduate in, in college, but he was thrown out his senior year for cheating on his metaphysics exam when he looked into the soul of the boy sitting next to him. Uh, and more of the same. Well, you get the point. This is a, a phrase and a, and a thought which is um, easily ridiculed. And of course, there are some very serious and well-respected philosophers who have argued that the question of the meaning of life isn't a real question at all. It's a it's a phrase that has the look of a question or the sound of a, a question that appears to be a question, but it's really an illusion or a mirage. It's not like other authentic questions. Um, uh, is that clock in the back of the room accurate? Uh, uh, sh uh, what's the point of going on a diet? Um, how do you get from New Haven to, uh, to Hanover? These are real questions because they're set in a context that permits you to uh, get your mind around them uh, to figure out what they mean and how you might go about answering them. But the question of the meaning of life lacks an orienting context of that kind. And some philosophers have said on account of that isn't really a meaningful question at all. It is a, a vacuity, an empty thought. But despite the humor, the comedians' jokes, and <laughs> the philosophers' arguments, the question continues to haunt us. And it is, I think, at the end of the day, impossible to get it out of one's mind. Not that it's before us uh, in any constant or even regular way, how, how many of us stop to put it, put the question of life's meaning to ourselves in this bold and, and direct way? Not very often, I uh, suspect. But it's always there, kind of hovering off stage, waiting to be called into the uh, spotlight, um, sometimes at the least expected moment, uh, a pin drops, a train of events is set in motion and you find yourself confronted with immensities and hovering in front of you is the question of what your life as a whole is for. It's a question that haunts us all. Uh, it is with us from the moment we become reflectively aware of ourselves as mortal beings with a career in the world. It never leaves us entirely. Very few of us ever answer it decisively and, uh, and satisfactorily. Um, it comes back to us in different forms at different stages of life, but it's there as the basso profundo of our existence in a very real way. One way, perhaps, of thinking about the question that may make it seem a bit more uh, familiar and, and plausible is this. 
The, the question of what my life means is the question of what I care about, or, or perhaps what I ought to care about. Of course, I care about many things. We all care about many things. Um, and the things we care about fit together into a loose hierarchy of allegiances or attachments or, or commitments. We care about some things more than we care about others. I think that's pretty plain. And most of us perhaps have the sense that the hi hierarchy of cares that informs our life that, uh, at, any, uh, at any stage um, comes to a peak, uh, as it were, in some set of ultimate allegiances, maybe a single one, maybe a family of allegiances, maybe a couple that are actually in tension or at war with each other, but there is something or some things at the end of the day that we care about ultimately and for the sake of which our other cares, most or all of them, have, their, have, have the place in our lives that they, they do. But if this question, what is the meaning of my life, what is my life for, what should I care about, where do my uh, ultimate allegiances lie, if this is a real, authentic, uh, even urgent question, as I believe it is, one might nevertheless have some real doubts as to whether it's a teachable topic. The question I began with was whether it's a question that ought to have a place in the curriculum of Dartmouth College or Yale or, or <coughs> schools like ours. And one might think this is a real question. It, it, it is the mother or father of all questions. It's, it's the one uh, that, that's there always waiting for us at the end of the trail. But it's not an appropriate subject, a fit subject of classroom instruction or investigation. If we come at it, we come at it after hours, so to speak, outside of school, in our uh, intimate relations with friends and others over coffee, uh, in late night bull sessions, uh, in faculty offices, but not in the classroom. It's, it's not a question that has, um, uh, uh, that has much, of a, much of a place, if any place at all, there. But in fact, un until just recently, and by just recently I mean roughly 50 years or so ago, I, you know, I, uh, uh, the other day I used that phrase just recently to refer to something that had happened 40 or 50 years ago, and I caught myself and uh, realized that just recently has become for me an alarmingly long time ago. Uh, I guess that's uh, just a consequence of of, uh, of growing old, but for me, just recently, 50 years or so ago, until then, r roughly uh, speaking, the question of life's meaning, the topic subject of, of life's meaning, had a central and uh, recognized and indeed well-respected place in the curricula of many, indeed, I think most of our uh, certainly are elite colleges and, and universities in this country and many others besides. It was assumed to be a teachable topic, but it, it has ceased to be so. The subject has been, to put it uh, uh, as uh, compactly as I can, it has been exiled from the classroom, it has been pushed out of school and left to the rest of life uh, uh, to pursue as best as it can be pursued, but as a subject of academic, disciplined academic in attention and in investigation, it has lost its central position and been uh, to a considerable degree marginalized. How did this happen? That's what I want to talk about this afternoon. Now to answer that question, it helps uh, to start by backing way up and taking a distant, distant bird's eye view of the whole long sweep of American higher education, beginning with the founding of Harvard College uh, in the early part of the uh, 17th century until the present hour. Now, that's a long uh, stretch of, of history to take in at a, a single 